What happens when one of the most brilliant home engineers of our time, the man who built a street-legal V12 motorcycle and somehow squeezed a Dodge Vipers V10 into a two-wheeler, decides to tinker with the most legendary aero engine ever made. I'm talking about the Rolls-Royce Merlin, the 27-litre V12 powerhouse that gave the Spitfire, the Hurricane and the P-51 Mustang their wings of fire. If Alan Milliard ever got his hands on one, the results would be beyond outrageous. They'd be shocking. Not shocking like, oh, that's unusual. I mean, the kind of shocking that makes mechanics drop their coffee mugs, makes engineers question the laws of physics, and makes neighbours consider selling their houses before he even fires it up. And before we dive into this wild rabbit hole, do me one favour. Smash that subscribe button like you're slamming the throttle on a Spitfire right before a dogfight. Because what you're about to hear will make every gearhead on Earth lean forward in their seat. Let's start with some cold, hard numbers. Because the Merlin wasn't just an engine, it was an industrial revolution in metal form. 27 litres of displacement, 12 cylinders arranged in a 60 degree V over 1,600 horsepower in later versions, capable of running at 3,000 RPM continuously during combat. Each piston alone displaces more than an entire Kawasaki Ninja 250 engine. To put that in perspective, the average car today has 1.5 to 2 litres of displacement total. A Toyota Corolla engine looks like a hamster wheel next to the Merlin. Even Milliard's Kawasaki V12 project, already considered insane, was just 2.3 litres. Now, picture Alan in his tiny, shed-turned laboratory with pistons bigger than his head laid out on the workbench. He wouldn't just need a socket wrench, he'd need lifting equipment. Rebuilding this monster isn't a project. It's a wrestling match with history, and it's not just size its sophistication. Back in the 1940s, the Merlin had two-stage superchargers, intercoolers and carburetors designed to work upside down because, well, fighter pilots liked doing barrel rolls. This wasn't some crude hunk of iron. It was a precision-built war machine. So yes, Milliard has done crazy things before. But this... This would be like asking a blacksmith to restore Excalibur. But here's the catch. Alan Milliard doesn't just restore engines. He brings them back to life in completely new ways. Which brings us to the next shocking question. Where would he even put a Merlin engine once it's rebuilt? Because trust me, Alan would never let something this powerful sit quietly in a museum. He'd find a way to make it roar again. Now, let's be honest, the internet would immediately start screaming, Alan, put it in a bike, make the world's biggest motorcycle. And while Milliard has built motorcycles that sound like a bad idea scribbled on a napkin, like the Dodge Viper bike, the Merlin is in a different galaxy of insanity. Here's why. The engine weighs roughly 700 kilograms, that's heavier than an entire Honda Civic engine, plus the car's transmission. The torque output is so brutal it would twist a normal bike frame into a pretzel before you even got out of first gear. Just starting it up would generate enough heat to roast a neighbourhood barbecue. So no, unless Alan wants to enter orbit on two wheels, a bike's off the table. That leaves us with two options. One... A car like the legendary Merlin-powered drag racers from the 1950s and 60s. Two, something entirely new, because Milliard is never content with repeating history. Now, a car makes sense. Rolls-Royce already turned the Merlin into the meteor engine for tanks. There have even been mad inventors who stuffed Merlins into hot rods. The most famous was Paul Jameson's Merlin Special a 27-litre monster car that became a legend in Britain. But Alan? 
He's got that unique streak of madness and artistry. He doesn't just build for shock value, he builds for functionality. You can ride his Viper bike. You can use his V12 Kawasaki. So, if he rebuilt the Merlin, he wouldn't just bolt it into a car. He'd build something that actually works. Something you could, in theory, drive. Imagine it. A Merlin-powered custom creation. Maybe half bike, half car. Something that looks like it escaped from a steampunk fever dream. A machine that turns petrol into thunder and asphalt into a runway. But here's where things get even crazier. Because making this engine run outside of a Spitfire isn't as simple as dropping it on a frame. It's an engineering nightmare. Let's break this down. The Merlin wasn't designed for stoplights, traffic jams, or smooth Sunday drives. It was designed for combat, which means Alan would have to solve problems that entire engineering teams struggled with in wartime factories. Cooling. This thing generates enough heat to fry eggs on the exhaust pipes. A normal motorcycle radiator? Forget it. You'd need something the size of a small swimming pool just to keep it under control. Fuel delivery. The Merlin gulps fuel like a frat boy at a free beer party. At full throttle, it burns 2.5 gallons per minute. That means Alan would need a fuel tank the size of a hot tub just for a short ride. Transmission. Good luck finding a gearbox that won't instantly disintegrate. The torque from a Merlin would tear apart most drivetrains before you even lifted your foot off the clutch. Ignition and maintenance. We're talking about dual magnetos, 24 spark plugs and tolerances that require near perfect precision. Rebuilding one isn't just about skill, it's about patience. Imagine timing 24 spark plugs by hand. One mistake and the whole thing detonates. But here's the shocking truth. Alan thrives in this space. Where others see problems, he sees challenges. His Kawasaki V12? Everyone said it was impossible. His Honda six-cylinder two-stroke? Mechanics laughed at the idea, yet he built them. If anyone could wrestle the Merlin's engineering demons into submission, it's Alan Milliard. And once he does, oh boy, the world would hear a sound it hasn't heard on the ground in decades. Because if you think a Harley rattles windows, the Merlin will rattle your soul. Let's talk about the sound. Because if the Merlin is famous for one thing, it's the noise. Picture this. It's 1940. A young pilot climbs into a Spitfire, he flicks the magneto switch, primes the fuel and presses the starter. The Merlin coughs, growls, then explodes into life with a scream that shakes the airfield. That sound wasn't just mechanical, it was emotional. It was the soundtrack of survival, hope and victory. Now imagine Alan Milliard in his suburban driveway firing up a freshly rebuilt Merlin. The neighbours wouldn't just peek out their curtains, they'd drop to the floor, thinking a war just broke out again. Birds would abandon the area. Dogs would file noise complaints. And the thing is, on a bike or car chassis, that roar would sound even more terrifying. Airplanes had long exhaust stacks muffling and directing the noise skyward. But in a custom machine... That sound would echo off every building, every tree, and every unlucky set of eardrums in a five-mile radius. This isn't loud. This is biblical. But the sound is only half the madness. The performance? That's where Jaws would really hit the ground. Let's talk numbers again, because this is where things go from wild to, are you kidding me? A Spitfire could reach 370 metod me with a Merlin. A Mustang could go over 400 me. These weren't just planes, they were rockets with wings. 
On the ground, that power translates into monstrous acceleration. A Merlin-powered car could theoretically hit speeds well beyond 200 mizpahichis if the tyres didn't vaporise and the chassis didn't twist itself into a pretzel first. Torque? We're talking about enough twisting force to shred drive shafts like twigs. This engine was built to haul tons of metal straight up into the sky. On the ground, that force would be violent, unpredictable and flat-out terrifying. But here's the shocking part. It wouldn't just be about raw numbers. It would be about the spectacle. Imagine Milliard rolling up to a car meet. Lamborghinis, Ferraris, Bugattis all lined up, their owners revving their engines to show off. Then Alan turns the key, and the Merlin answers back with the roar of a thousand angry gods. Game over. Everyone else packs up and goes home. But the most powerful part of this whole project isn't even the performance. It's the meaning, the connection back to history. Because beyond the horsepower and the madness, the Merlin carries a legacy that would give Milliard's rebuild a much deeper purpose. The Merlin isn't just an engine. It's a piece of history. It's the beating heart that helped win the Battle of Britain. Every time it roared into life, it carried not just a pilot, but the hopes of a nation. If Alan rebuilt one, it wouldn't just be about creating the ultimate engineering flex. It would be a tribute a mechanical memorial that keeps history alive. And that's what makes this so powerful. Because in Milliard's hands, the Merlin wouldn't just sit in a museum collecting dust. It would live, breathe and roar again. Future engineers would be inspired. Young gearheads would realise that history isn't something you just read in books. It's something you can build, touch and hear. And the world would be reminded that machines aren't just cold metal. They're carriers of meaning. But wait. Let's not kid ourselves. If Alan did this, the reactions wouldn't just be admiration. They'd be explosive. Let's picture it. Alan posts a YouTube video. Just finished rebuilding a Rolls-Royce Merlin in my shed. Here's the first startup. The internet would melt. Car blogs would lose their minds. Engineering forums would erupt. Half of Reddit would scream, fake, until they saw the proof. The aviation community would call him a genius for keeping history alive. The car world would call him insane, in the best way possible. But then there's the practical side. Governments might raise eyebrows. Can you really road register a vehicle powered by an aircraft engine? Insurance companies would laugh you out of the office. Environmental groups? Let's just say 2.5 gallons per minute of fuel isn't exactly eco-friendly. And yet, that's the beauty of Alan Milliard. He doesn't build for approval. He builds because he can. He builds because engineering for him isn't about rules, it's about possibilities. And that's why, if he ever touched the Merlin, the world would never forget it. So, let's answer the question, what would happen if Alan Milliard decided to rebuild the Merlin engine? He'd face an engineering challenge bigger than anything he's ever attempted. He'd have to tame a monster designed for the skies and put it on the ground. He'd create a sound so unforgettable it would give goosebumps to anyone within earshot. And he'd remind us all that engineering isn't just about machines. It's about imagination, history and passion. In the end, it wouldn't just be shocking. It would be inspiring. Because in a world full of disposable technology... Alan Milliard proves that true engineering artistry is still alive. And sometimes it takes a mad genius to show us what's possible. And that's the magic of the thought experiment we've just explored. If you loved this deep dive, then don't just sit there. 
subscribe to Ab Tech Lab right now. Because trust me, the next video might just make you rethink everything you thought you knew about engines.